Hello and welcome to the Tide video series where we bring you select sessions from our TechLink Innovation Day event. Today's session is on how Kellogg leveraged Anaplan to optimize the marketing spend process. I am Michael Sabolos. I am the global practice lead for TechLink International and I've been in the industry for around 20 plus years doing multiple planning solutions, finance solutions, uh, for industries and companies of all sizes. Today, I am joined by Jen Kiefer. Jen, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, um, I'm Jen. I am with Kellogg Company. I've been with Kellogg for 22 years, and typically I work in the, worked in the finance organization, uh, and I've recently transitioned to support our IT organization. Uh, I was part of this project in my world of finance supporting us to get into our marketing spend and how we forecast and um, analyze our marketing spend using Anaplan as a tool. Thanks, Jen. Mm -hmm. So today our agenda is to, to cover uh, marketing spend in general and, and what the problem is and, and how we solve this with Anaplan. Then we'll go into the specific project at Kellogg and uh, Jen will give us a demo at the end of the specific solution. So marketing spend, what is that? That covers things like advertising, customer promotion, coupon planning, and, and management of those coupons. Managing that spend is, is what this solution is designed to do. Now, the marketing spend planning solution is part of TechLink's Anaplan solutions for CPG, our suite of solutions. And we'll be talking specifically about this one today, but you can see there are several others that we've created specifically for the consumer packaged goods industry. So why marketing spend? Right now, you know, globally, brands spend over a trillion dollars on marketing assets like the ones I talked about. This number is huge and, and is frequently not very visible to organizations. They counting, tracking, keeping up with how these are working and the effectivity of the marketing spend as well as where it's going and how it's budgeted and tracking it is, is, is a big problem. A lot mostly done in Excel in a lot of places and not very not not very easy to analyze. Uh, chief marketing officers don't have the visibility they need. Finance doesn't have the visibility they need, and there's often a, a disjointed process between uh, marketing and finance in, in these cases. So this solution aims to, to solve that problem. So right now, as I mentioned, most companies are using a lot of offline worksheets, right? So no visibility, no track of traceability, and obviously um, no security. Without that, you, you, it's hard to have any kind of business process, right? So you don't have that connection between the marketers, the business units, and the, and the CFO that is needed to really properly track this, properly plan it, and analyze you know, how your spend is, is working for you or, or not working for you. Lastly, um, it, without a, a, you know, any kind of solution, it's very difficult to audit or track your spend, your, alloc your, your accruals, how you're um, planning any of this, this money. And, and obviously, your auditors care about that because you're accruing for a lot of the spend as it, as it isn't really easily trackable to a time. So our solution that we built it has the following components, right? So obviously there's campaign creation and, and Jen will show you a lot of this later where we actually create the planned spend for advertising coupons, et cetera, in the solution. Once the campaigns are created and, and planned for, we can plan specific activities for a campaign, uh, specific spending activities, specific types of, of spend, whether it be a coupon or a media, et cetera. And also, allocate all that stuff to the brands so a coupon or activity may cross brands allocating that spend to the brand so you could see brand level spend and that kind of detail is something the solution provides from that a, a sorted reporting obviously spend analysis by the campaign which is very valuable to the marketers uh, risk and opportunity uh, to say okay I've, I've spent this much but i planned for that much what's open what's what's not open and, and where do i lie and how do i want to manage that again from an audit standpoint that's very important and then specific tactic spending you know so within within an activity specific looking at spend by specific tactic is another piece of reporting that comes out of this solution and jen will show you all of these things again in a, in a few minutes uh, that's a quick overview of what, what, what we have and what TechLink's done and, and what we did with Kellogg on this project. Um, with that, I, I'm going to hand it over to Jen to talk about the, the actual project uh, at Kellogg. Jen, please go ahead. 
So the project in Kellogg's, um, specifically our North American business, um, why did we need to do this project? Well, we had a lot of the current drawbacks that Mike alluded to in his previous slides, um, where we were very siloed within our existing processes. All of those areas um, and individuals use their own offline Excel files and documents to maintain them, to distribute them via email, um, which left for some um, lack of understanding, uh, lots of manual effort um, across the teams, uh, lots of duplication, um, and some audit risks when it came into understanding when changes were made, how they were made, why they were made, and things like that. So offline Excel files were just a real um, a big issue that we were seeing. Uh, they also were not able to bring together the data in a really good, concise format to be able to look across multiple brands or roll up to a, a whole category easily to be able to see um, good analytics and make um, very um, agile decisions. So a little bit about the project. Um, when we think about projects, uh, I like to think about what worked well and maybe what we could have done a little bit better. Um, what worked well in this project for us actually is we did implement and use the, the Anaplan Way, which was um, utilizing an agile app that they have. And um, it was the first time we used it, but it really helped us stay on course and take a look at the project um, holistically from the beginning. And uh, we were able to then align how we wanted to approach it when we wanted to do things. Our timeline was approximately 18 weeks um, from the scoping and in design into uh, go live. We also were very, um, I was very adamant that we have our Kellogg team heavily involved in the build and the design um, of the tool, um, making sure that once we didn't have our partners, our tech link partners there to kind of help support um, a day-to-day -day basis, we had some strong people um, that could maintain the tool and, and go forward and enhance it as we needed. So that was um, a very important thing for us to do. And then we also engaged with Anna Plan to use new functionality that they were releasing at that time, um, getting into an early access program and, and their dynamic cell access um, tools were part of that new functionality that was coming out in um, mid 2018 that we began utilizing. What could we have done better? I think the biggest thing that I saw as we look back in hindsight um, we didn't necessarily um, involve our, our end users in the user story gathering and review. We leaned on uh, a group that kind of sits in between our, um, our finance organization and our marketing organization and works with our, our technical team to, to kind of maintain and, and work through the tool. We utilize the group um, a little heavier than we probably should have. We should have had our marketers more directly involved than we did earlier. So I think that's what we could have done better and what I would encourage anybody who's going to look at a similar type of project to do. So our results, uh, we did have some really good results from doing this. We, our finance team um, saw some reduction in their workload so they're able to do more um, kind of in less time and, and with um, less manual needs. We did uh, create a standardized process by doing this. Everything goes into the Anaplan tool. Everything is managed through the tool. We eliminated the ability to do things in manual within our ERP environment that previously would have um, happened that way. So we put some um, rigor around it that was very much needed. Uh, I would love to say we absolutely eliminated offline Excel files, but everybody knows that people can't give up their Excel files. So we reduced um, the need for them. And I'm hoping that as people work through it more and more, they see the benefit and don't feel the need to maintain Excel files. Um, but we do everything directly in the tool. So our um, 
A, P, and C team, so that's their advertising, promotion, and coupon team, which is that liaison team I talked about, um, they utilize the tool of, of quite a bit when they're working with the marketers and they're working with finance to kind of understand what's going on. Um, and they feel like it's just a million times better than what they had experienced before because they were in that boat of gathering information um, from multiple sources, multiple people having to piecemeal it together. So this is a ton better for them. They work directly in the tool in meetings to make updates, to make real-time changes, to look at real-time scenarios. Um, we also use Anaplan to maintain the approval process to reduce the workload of the approvers so things go directly to the approvers. Um, we provide the visibility to the business in real time so they don't have to wait for offline files, they don't have to wait for people to gather up their Excel, what if somebody's out, things like that. Uh, happens daily updates or, or how often, however often they need to make updates, they can be in there making these updates. Um, our marketing team also really does get better visibility out of this. So they're able to then look at the tool and, and see a more holistic view, especially if it's someone who owns leading a team of individuals that have multiple brands or multiple um, lines of their category. Our marketers are in there directly. They're the hands-on, and um, it really helped bridge a gap between what we saw within finance and marketing. Um, we, the other thing that we are also able to do is we have some visibility to how expenses allocated. So where they don't necessarily plan at a very, very granular level, we do have some allocations that happen at a, at a, at a more, out, more granular level. So we're able to provide some allocation rules that help them do that. So I'm going to move into solution demonstrations. Um, within our marketing zone, we have the comprehensive plan campaign planning, the approval and oversight, and then a self-reporting um, tool. So within the comprehensive planning, um, a lot of summarized information based on their cost owner and category that they're looking at. So you, what you saw above were some year-to-date, some quarterly views, it shows graphical formats, which we do find is more appealing to some of our marketers than um, grids. They can look at things um, and look at their current month. They can compare it to um, previous periods or previous months. Um, and then when they go and they're ready to um, create a new campaign, they're right on their dashboard. It gives them the ability to do that. So they select their um, create a campaign. They go in. Um, and then there are some red fields in here, and this is where we utilize some functionality to make required fields. And it helps guide our users to what do they need to put in and where do they need to do it. It made it a little bit more user friendly. So they put in information. They can choose whether or not they want to plan this, actually plan it, or if they just are looking to kind of do a what if scenario. A planned scenario goes right into their budget numbers um, once it's approved, a what if, they can leave in that scenario until they're ready to make that a plan or get rid of it. Um, talked a little bit about that allocation. Um, each cost owner or kind of um, marketing spend bucket owner has an allocation tied to them. So it is um, directed and driven right within the tool. They don't select that differently. Uh, but if they do have an allocation, they may have to select how they want to allocate it. So in this case, they want to, it's selected by brands, so they would choose what brands they want to allocate to. So all their spend, they can plan at a higher level and then all the allocations will then kind of trickle down. Once they do the, the kind of hotter component of it, they're going to plan their activities. Their activities um, are all more derivative, so they would put in a description, they would pick what's called a tactic. A tactic then we linked to driving against some of the cost spend buckets. So we eliminated the need for our users to know, well, I'm gonna do this, so what account does that actually book to? We're, we are using their tactic information to drive that. So we eliminated a lot of errors that we saw happening because users didn't always know what to use. Um, within our tools, if they need a, um, a, a like a checkbook spend or a cost spend, they can request an account or, or they can use one that existing. 
they request an account get created, then we have provided them fields that we fill in for them to populate that information. So again, we're trying to streamline and make some real um, guided decisions on what goes into our ERP system and descriptive wise and things like that. Um, once they've done everything they need to do and they put in their dollars and um, they do all of their activity, they can um, choose to add a coupon if they need to. If they don't, they, they, can skip, they can skip that. But if they need to add a coupon because our coupons are managed slightly different, they can add those in this section. Again, we utilize the red cells to provide them with, you need to fill this in. Um, some are pick lists, some are free text. Um, they will also, again, say whether or not they need a new spend um, account or if they are gonna utilize one that's existing. Once all that's done, they, we kinda like use some, uh, of these boxes to say, yes, I've done everything I need to do. They can put their dollars in. And then once they do all that, at the very bottom, there is a submit it for approval. So assuming that they filled in all of the fields they need to fill in, they would submit for approval and then it would move into that stage. Until it's approved, they can come back and make changes to this if they choose to. Um, and that is where they would choose to edit their um, campaign. So they would pick their campaign that they've created, maybe they created it just now or they created it a week ago, or, and they can see that a summary of their information, they can see what they did, and then they can go in and, and make changes. And all those cells are in blue, so they can currently make changes to them because it's not been approved. That ends the demonstration for that component to do create the mark to create this category or spends. I'll move to the approval component. So when we get into the stage where they've submitted their campaigns for approval, then it goes to um, an approval process that sits with our um, more or less within our business, their finance uh, leads that that review and monitor um, the spend and activity against their budget and their targets and things like that. They see a dashboard specifically around this where they can look at each um, category, each spend donor, and each campaign. When they do that and they review that, and they can go in and review more detail if they choose to, but once they do that, they would approve those campaigns. So this is where once that's completed, you can go back to this campaign and you can see now those first three campaigns were approved. They can't make any edits to those now. So we eliminate the ability for them to move money around once they're approved unless they um, can, unless they work through this with their finance organization. So within our finance team, they do their approvals. They can make comments if they need to. And then once they do that, then it goes to their CFO for approval. Their CFO is going to approve at a higher level, they're going to improve it, approve for their function. But most of the work that um, was done, they've done reviews with their business leads or their finance leads. And once they approve that from a CFO perspective, the finance lead can't go and unapprove something. So we made it um, so that all of this is linked together and all of these approvals are connected. That's the end. So the next, so next demonstration we'll do is the um, reporting solution. So within the reporting, we actually created a separate um, model for the reporting solution. Um, and we also kept some reporting right within the, the core model. So anything that is not allocated, we do right within the, the planning model. Do you see that there are various different things that they can look at to review within their, um, each cost owner can look at their actuals and they can look at their forecast to review. And in here, it's broken up by the lines of the PL and then by function, by cost owner. So they can go down to their specific cost owner. They can roll up to a higher function if they want. Um, they can break out their lines of their PL if they want to see more granularly how something, how the 
how the numbers roll up. Um, or in, as shown in this case, we've just done more of the summary lines. They can see it by the quarter, by the year. They can look at better, worse uh, scenarios across budget, strategic estimate, prior year, things like that. Again, in this instance, they're looking in forecast and they can show a little bit more detail if they choose to or they can roll it up. If they choose to want to look at it in an allocated um, format, then we have a separate dashboard um, tool that provides the allocated review. So it, you'll see here on this dashboard, they click on which they want to look at. So in, in forecast spending, um, and this is all allocated spend, they can look at it by their business units, their function, their cost owner. They can also then drill down and look at brand specific information to a category and, and down to a brand. They can see the information again based on whether it's budget, prior forecast, prior um, year. And then they uh, can look at it in the grid format with the lines of the PNL. They've got some graphical views to see how their spend is being, out, being allocated out based on the categories and then how graphically they, they look in comparison to their previous spend. There's also an actuals dashboard that shows um, similar information. So it'll see their actuals coming in at a month to date, a quarter to date, year to date, compare it to their budget, their prior forecasts, and it's all within the, the grid down below. But again, they can roll that up to a function level, a business unit level, or they can go and drill down to a brand level as well. Other reporting uh, that we got in doing this that we didn't previously have great visibility to was a strategic vendor report. So what this report does is we can look at, uh, based on how they planned their campaigns, they needed to select a strategic vendor that they were utilizing. So in this, it shows in the middle uh, where they picked, um, say, Leo Burnett or, or a different vendor. And what we can do in that case is get some visibility to what we're spending across the strategic vendors. Uh, and how that's broken up. It can either be for a specific vendor or it can be for all vendors and then how that spend is broken up. So we're able to kind of slice and dice the information looking at it this way. Um, so it gives some better visibility and specifically our procurement organization um, was uh, very keen to see this type of information because we didn't, um, so something we just didn't have before because everything was gathered. Um, by individuals manually in Excel files. So we have some visibility to what's actually been occurring and what we're forecasting to do. So we have several dashboards on here. Um, those were the only the ones, the three that I was gonna go through with this, but as you can see, we created several other dashboards to provide different visibility for the users. And um, we just continue to enhance it uh, as we need or we might remove some if they're not being utilized or we, we add or, or modify them. So that's the flexibility we get within this tool to be able to maintain that and meet our end user needs. That is the end of the demonstration and I'll hand it back over to Mike. Thanks, Jen, um, and thanks for joining us for this, uh, this session. Uh, again, this is part of the TIDE video series and I hope you enjoyed it and, and the others that we have out there as well.